Sister Mary is here now. Mm-hmm. Is that all right? Yep. Okay. I, I can't see the screen because I got some words up there. Okay. Good evening and welcome. I am Juan Manuel Perez, the outgoing 2019-2020 Poet Laureate, and I would like to thank you for coming tonight to the opening ceremony of the greatest literary celebration this side of the Rio Nueces, the sixth, <laughs> annual, <laughs> the sixth annual poetry festival right here in Corpus Christi, Texas. Orale! This is the Poet Laureate ceremony. I will be giving some remarks afterwards and introducing the new Paul Laureate so he can speak and read a few poems to you. But first, let me introduce to you and the whole world watching our special guest, the grandest mayor of the greatest city in the Lone Star State, the Honorable Paulette Guajardo, who will say as many words as she pleases to <laughs> deliver special proclamation to you tonight. Are you excited? I'm excited. Juan, I love it. I'm excited. Ladies and gentlemen and fellow bars, Mayor Paulette Guajardo. Thank you. Thank you, Juan, so much. Alan, William, Joshua, thank you all. Um, it's my honor. It's my honor to be here as your mayor and for you know the purpose of tonight, which is wonderful. I'm so impressed with this, and I want to congratulate Tom Murphy um, on behalf of the city for being selected the third uh, official, right? Port Laureate from Corpus Christi, which is big. So so I'm we're, we're thrilled and I will be presenting, I'll be reading this commendation to you uh, this evening, but I will also be doing so uh, on Tuesday in our meeting, um, even though we won't really be there, but I will do that so that the public knows. So here we go. <clears throat> At the sixth annual People's Poetry Festival, or PPF, Tom Murphy was named as the Poet Laureate of Corpus Christi by the People's Poetry Festival Committee. Tom Murphy, a Texas A&M University Corpus Christi professional assistant professor, hold on a sec, yeah, sorry. Tom Murphy, a Texas A&M University Corpus Christi professional assistant professor in English, is the author and editor of four poetry collections, Horizon to Horizon in 2015, American History in 2017, Stone Ringa Edition 2017, and Pearl 2020, with forthcoming collection Snake Woman Moon in 2021. A member of the Academy of American Poets since 2011, Tom is the Langdon Review's 2021 Writer in Residence in Granbury, Texas. His poetry has appeared in such periodicals as The Writing Texas, San Antonio Express News, Locust Review, and the, Antho and the Anthologies Beatitude 50, Golden Anniversary, Outrage, The Great American Wise Ass Poetry, and Odes and Elegy, Elegy, Elegies, Echo Poetry from the Texas Gulf Coast. Tom Murphy, as an original member of the PPF committee, helped start the People's Poetry Festival in 2016 and has led all the festivals in Corpus Christi. This year, the festival is growing with 40 poets from six states that will participate in an online format because of COVID-19. The fifth annual Rob Jackson Poetry Awards for high school students from the Coastal Bend region who will be named at this event. Tom has also been involved in led University Authors Day at Tamu CC, in which a hundred plus Coastal Bend High School students would work with the faculty and a prominent writer. Also, Tom has worked for three years with the Barrio Writers Summer Program that emphasizes writers of color for at-risk teens at the Antonio E. Garcia Arts and Education Center. Congratulations on being named Poet Laureate of Corpus Christi. In testimony thereof, I hereby set my hand and caused to affix the seal of the city of Corpus Christi on February 25th, 2021 as mayor of Corpus Christi. Thank you very much. Absolutely Thank honored. You. We are honored. This is amazing. I'm so proud and I will read this 
uh, in in council on Tuesday. Wow. Cool. Yes, absolutely. I'm so super proud and super um, very, very honored, like I said, because this is very good and I love the work. It's just so impressive. Thank you. Tom. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. Yes, sir. All right. And before I let Tom read, I have a few remarks as I'm going for. Good evening again. First and foremost, thank you to God for his grace, his mercy, and for keeping us alive and going in these exceptional times, as well as for allowing me to serve as the 2019-2020 Polo Head for Corpus Christi, Texas. I would also like to thank you, you who are witnesses to my final spoken and written address in the official capacity as the Poet Laureate for Corpus Christi, now outgoing. I would like to thank my lifelong friend, master teacher and beautiful wife, Dr. Malia Ann Perez, and to my two extraordinarily smart adult children, Mara Mercedes and Juan Jr., both successful as well in their own fields, as well as my very intelligent grandson, Martin Mata Perez, AKA Dr. Martin Molecule, who will surpass the entire family one day as a scientist, artist, writer, and dare I say poet, and who knows what else in the sunny years and decades to come. I have been very blessed by almighty God to have all of you as my family during this historic and never ending creative journey. I would like to thank the founding committee of the People's Poetry Fest as well as the mayor's office and the mayor herself and our city council for the honor to represent this shiny city by the bay the last two years, even though 2020 was tough one on all of us. I would like to thank and recognize the inaugural Corpus Christi Poet Loet, the invincible librarian from the Northeast, Alan Boreca, who also represented Del Mar College in his term as I represented Coastal Bend Area Public Schools in mine. Thank you, brother. I would also like to thank every single poet of the Coastal Bend area, as well as every poet and poet fan in the great state of Texas and elsewhere that supports our poet and this annual poetry festival now in its sixth year. This festival might not be as big as some others yet, but it sure is dang pretty and colorful here. <laughs> Before I move on to the main attraction, allow me to do a little office keeping with the following suggestion. As my final act, I decree, okay, I suggest then to the committee that you take into consideration that from here on out, and as demonstrated by both the first and the second poet laureates already, that any future outgoing poet laureate may have the special ability to nominate his or her replacement to the committee for it to be voted upon in an official session at or around six months prior to every two annual festivals. This should help smooth out any future interactions in making such decisions for this office. So now to the task at hand. I make the following presentation after the official proclamation from the mayor and the city of Corpus Christi. I now recognize my brother and the incoming poet laureate, as well as the chairman of this very poetry fest committee, Professor Tom Murphy, as the third and new Corpus Christi poet laureate in a long line of more yet to come, and a representative of the Island University and my children's alma mater, Texas A&M University in Corpus Christi. As the outgoing poet, Laura, I present to you a golden medallion to adorn your body so that those that interact with you may recognize you as the current, the current poet laureate representing the beautiful city of Corpus Christi. As the outgoing polaret, I also present to you a plaque to adorn the walls of your home or office so those that enter it may recognize you as the current polaret representing this beautiful city of Corpus Christi, Texas. With all that said, and at this very moment on Thursday, February 25th, 2021, I, Juan Manuel Perez, the 2019-2020 Poet Laureate for Corpus Christi, Texas, declare you, Tom Murphy, the new 2021-2022 Poet Laureate for Corpus Christi, Texas. May poetic success be yours 
and may you wield your verses like a great instrument in your term of the most celebrated poet of the greatest place in the world, my adopted home, this shiny city by the bay. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. I yield the floor to the next poet laureate. Thank you so much, Juan, for that. And thank you, Mayor Gerardo. I really appreciate all this. And um, so let me uh, start off here. Um, thanks to the city of Corpus Christi, my fellow poets, um, my team UCC colleagues, my wife, Susan, uh, and our daughters, uh, Sophia, uh, Eleanor and Anna, and the members of the PPF committee, and uh, so many friends and family. And finally, thank you all for coming out. I've really seen a lot of people from all across the country, very wonderful. But I also wanna thank the people of Corpus. Uh, you've uh, really made it happen for me here. Uh, the first poem I want to read tonight is um, called Telling the Bees. Uh, this is from my first collection, uh, American History. And um, it, the, the language is deep, but the gist of the poem mixes politics of the Bush administration and visiting the home I grew up in after we had sold it. So here we go. Telling the Bees. Part one, the anabiosis. Through frenzy dancing and gesticulation, a search commences for the hidden peony, whose perfume lingers momentarily, lost that cinnabar chain. Began with the pyracantha, fire thorn, Nix went the privet hedgerow out front. Low level junipers grew brown, brittle, crumble to dust, lacking nitrogen. From Dead Horse Point, gray excavation commences. Wheels churn the ruts around the bend of 40th year constellation. Bad water, painted, Nevada, West Teos, Columbia Icefield, Taos, Owens Valley, Mojave, skin, mine loops of belt slashes. Part two. The Anna Camper Sarot. Diffused herb triggers of Chartantism, smile and woodland brool. Revisited the remodeled dwelling hive. Jasmine vaults the redwood fence. Walls disappear. Walk 10 paces to neoform basins, doors, shelters, bodies, all removed yellow chroming towards red swath halls, airy flight towards storage catacomb, the nursery centralized, squished, sanitized, except the window screen grime. A new door bounds the specter of the kitchen witch to enveloping petals of flagstone steps. The young landscape bountifully sea green lacks carpels and stamens, to notice the nailed down upright horseshoe, a wall. Part three, the erogenous pattering. The ventriloquist first, ah, buzz, surrounds Bonis Amenis, awaiting the Bonton strut past the guards. The propolis slappers to the comb lands the flyer. She shakes them up while she starts to walk. Anther, in angle proximity of the burning orb. Shuffle your waggle, four cells left. Buddy bounce and wiggle bow. Flaunt your belly and shake your sacks. Let majesty catch that fragrant gusto. From the, this ripe nectar, a full draught, the bee mouth sips. Can't you sniff that babe's rot? Bee gum wanes with breath sour. Bacterium spores absequatulate. The full brood waxes absconed. The taserman cometh jab and sting. Part four, the hyperextended breath of life. Buzz, buzz, Aldrin, buzz light year. The MIT receptors buzz into the plethora of atom technology. Bionic Nanos V still swarms. The hum of juke joint automaton whirls. Africanized hybridity 
a pedantic hush, winkety wonk through my afterlife guaranteed. Corn stalks begin to stoit and stock like gators from pond to pool. A stolenization of Stalinization emanated with extreme pressure, Barbital Cheney, the bees and honey. Part five, the Bizaronian the rascals. Beowulf, the hoaxer drones, quote, I am an infidel today, unquote, not a veranter of honey. Spare me consanguineous control. The temptation of anarchy begins to assail here and now. Pheromones fan slogans eradicate the aberrant. Join the hive for join the fight for hive security. Be a good worker or be stung to death. The Melliferous Times editorial byline, quote, wearing a fetid coxcomb, the artist of Khan, buried by red tape and newfangled laws, pitched as boogie or bollocks, was quietly stung repeatedly over the duration between swarms prior to expiring the fa final exhalation of the obstinate bee, quote, of soil. I won't chase. Thank you very much. Um, I got two more poems here. So uh, for the next, uh, for my next book, uh, uh, Pearl is the next poem and it's called Terry Martin, um, who was a contemporary of mine while growing up. I originally recorded myself when I drove around Corpus Christi after dropping my daughters off at school. And um, so, there is more spoken word aspect in this and with a lot of repetitions. Terry Martin. I remember Terry Martin, Terry Martin. His father was a longshoreman, had tattoos. He lived just up the street on Barron Avenue. We were really never good friends, probably the better of friends, like when we were in second grade. I remember being in his home with a big tree in the front and the big tree in the back, the small step into the front and, and the, out of the back in the house. And then we had the fight, the fight where I use wrestling moves. When I was in fifth grade, sixth grade, and I kind of choked him and I won. Terry's. Crowning achievement probably in education in any sort of way was the pitch, the pitching he did in our game versus the faculty in elementary school. And he pitched a great game. And Rusty Berthume, our manager, when I asked him, can I pitch? No, I think Terry's doing really good. And I have to agree, Terry did really good. And the years went by. We really drifted apart. And there was a seething hatred when we would see each other. Terry with his white t-shirt and his plaid long sleeve shirts untucked, dangling about his body and the hatred in his eyes, the nonchalance. I don't think he ever graduated from high school, but I remember on his birthday, which was always April 22nd, five days after mine, I remember seeing him. And this really said a lot about us. Since I was in the car with my mother driving, getting off Barron Avenue onto El Camino de Real, and I saw him with his woman. And I saw him walk away from his woman and his child, who stood there, who stood there, looking at mother and father, going in opposite directions, caught in the middle, stood there, not sure what to do, where to go, and the child stood there. And this reminded me of Terry and his family. His brother, Alan, well, I have an older brother, Alan, as well. Terry's brother, Alan, had polio, older, but with polio. He limped up and down the road. He was a thief. In fact, the county sheriffs came and arrested him and others 
who were breaking into the house across the street from them, from Terry's, and arrested them and put them in jail. It was his sister, Terry's sister, Alan's sister. I don't remember her name. Linda, I think. But she had red hair like her mother. And she actually called the sheriff. Since we didn't have police where we lived, we had to get the county sheriff. We were in an unincorporated area in Palo Alto, Barron Park. And they came and they arrested them, Billy Diodny and Alan Martin, and took them off to jail. And that's how the family was, a longshoreman for a father, working class, trying to keep it together. And Alan Martin was one big character. When he was on LSD once, he drove his motorcycle through Woodside High's hallways. Woodside, driving that motorcycle. He's a big character. I don't know what ever happened to him as he's limping along down the street from polio. And then there was Terry later. When I was in Floyd Salas's class and we were eating pizza at the Round Table Pizza on University Avenue in Palo Alto, the one that Tom Berry used to work at downstairs where he would have flour all over his pants. You could pat TB's pants and flour dust rise just like the pizza crust. And then we were sitting there eating our pizza after class, after our Monday night class and having a beer. And I pointed to Terry as he's coming in. And I said, that guy hates me. Uh, would you back me up if something happens? Floyd being the boxer he is and was said, yeah, man, sure. And you could see it. He said to me later, he could see the hatred in Terry's eyes as Terry looked at me and saw me right there, right there in public, saw me and the hatred burning in his eyes, the hatred going all the way back to that fight, possibly the hatred going back to the advantages that I had financially and stability and my family. But he didn't know what was going on with me as much as I didn't know what was going on with him. And then, ironically, as Tom Berry and I digressed even further into our crack and cocaine habits, we ended up hooking up with Terry and going back to Terry's old home. His parents, the longshoreman and his redheaded wife, I don't know where they were then, somewhere else, obviously. I didn't know where his woman was, where his child was. I, having none of those at the time, and so we ended up at his house, smoking crack together, talking and partying. Maybe we had crank, I can't remember. But we were doing some type of white powder imbibing. And he talked and he told us to Tom and me about him and his buddy when they had stolen a car and they were driving on Bayshore Freeway down by San Jose, heading north and they were on PCP and they started having delusions, delusions so bad that they had to park the car on the freeway. They pulled off on the left-hand side of the fast lane in the middle meridian of 101. And there they were there having these delusions on PCP. And they, Terry, ran across the freeway, skipping through the buzzing traffic as it came at him barely making it. And as he got up over the overpass, what was actually walking over the overpass, seeing the stolen car parked on the meridian, down in front of him, crossing Highway 101, trans the actual freeway, the vein of Silicon Valley. He watched his friend stumble through the lanes and get hit by a car, bounced, careened, corumed, off cars as if we're a pinball bouncing until he was down and run over. That was the last time I saw Terry Martin. That tale, and we hung out and partied at his house and had a good time like we did playing in his backyard as kids, running around, playing games like tag or such things. But we had this magnificent tale that Tom Berry would bring up again and again. 
about Terry and his friend on PCP. That was a good tale, I said. Exactly, exactly. Where are you, Terry? I have no idea. Peace, brother. Um, I'm gonna close out with a, a much shorter poem here. And um, this uh, final poem I'd like to read, I, I wrote this past year and it was published by the Austin International Poetry Festival online in their coronavirus anthology called Going Viral. The poem called Living, Teaching Near the Water utilizes the French form Villanelle in which the first and third lines of the first stanza alternate as the final line in the following stanzas and then are married together in the final stanza. I was gonna sip a water here. Oh, there it is. Living, teaching near the water. Living, teaching near the water. COVID 19's changed everything we know. Lectures on writing and slaughter. COVID cases, front page blotter. Testing sites, obituary deaths grow. Masked up, quarantined near the water. Online PowerPoints, Harry Potter. Fear the card, lightning struck tower, hollow. Avada Kedavra, slaughter. 22nd hand wash, bother. Plexiglass hangs between computer row. Master says, teach near the water. Hate, riot guns, black lives matter. Flatten the curve, fake book flambeau. President Trump's record slaughter. Patrick Dan, quote, die for granddaughter, unquote. Reefer container for body bags to stow. Gasping, dying near the water. Corpus Christi led to slaughter. Thank you very much. Please come to the uh, People's Poetry Festival. You can go to uh, www.peoplespoetryfest.com uh, for the, all the panels and everything. All right. I think somebody turned the light out in the hallway here. <laughs> right there at the end. It's like lights out. All right. Congratulations, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juan. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Felicidades, Tom. Thank you, Javier. Thank you, everybody. Wow, I hope we get this crowd for every panel. That'd be great. We will. All right. All right. Huh. Glad that's over. <laughs> Congratulations, Tom. Thank and, you so much, Rossi. And actually, like the, the light going out at the end was so dramatic, like on oh, point. So. Yeah, well, I planned it that way, you know. That's, <laughs> It was that was all planned. Yeah. He was great. It. Good. Congratulations. Thank Congratulations, you, Robin. Tom. It Thank was you. wonderful reading. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Congratulations from Benny and me. Oh, uh, thank you, Benny. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> Cheers, Tom. Thank you. Oh, yeah, that's what I want to Congratulations again, Tom. <laughs> Pardon? Congratulations again. Thank you so much, Crystal. Appreciate it. Thank you for the, the podcast. Yes. Interview. That was great. Appreciate that. Of course. We love having you. Uh, oh, Ernie, my friend just uh, came back in. <laughs> you missed it, Ernie. Uh, but yeah, no, it's great. It's great. I am um, very happy all the people came tonight. It's very nice. And uh, I'm glad that reading's over. <laughs> Congrats, Pops. Thank, How are you thank doing? Thank you so much. Thank you. That was good. Fun. I was glad to get it over you with. Did. You did well. Thank you. Like your poems. Thank you. Yeah, that last one might get me in trouble. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Maybe not a little. Too, not too bad. Yeah. Not too bad. That's good. Yeah. Oh. But there's a, people from like all over the country. California, uh, New York, and uh, Oklahoma. And that's great. Cal Allen, Joe Wilson. Joe Wilson. I thought he was in Robstown. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, um. Yeah, Bob Dean saying Kansas. Yeah. If oh, we wow, all Kansas. click our, if we click all, all of us click our heels, we can go stop. <laughs> We got to get to Kansas. <laughs> I don't have the clicky heels. I'm wearing tennis shoes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, are they red? No, no, no. I, I'm, I wear black shoes now. Damn. Yeah. Well, anyways, great job, Tom. Thank you. Congratulations, man. Thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay. okay. See you all tomorrow. Good job, Tom. Right. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow, Tom. You got it. All right. Thank you. Bye, guys. All right. The hard part's over. For... <laughs> We're here. We're in the middle now. It's all the best. Uh, all right. Now. Um, uh, I got one, Tom. Sure. Can you loan me some of your hair? <laughs> yeah i don't got much to loan if you take a good look it's really uh it's a. there's not much there up there that's okay happy to have what i have that's for sure what kind of poem was that last one again that's called the villanelle it's french and um i actually started writing those when i when uh francis mays who wrote um the uh, uh the book on italy and board and um oh my gosh She's very famous now. She was my po poetry instructor at San Francisco State University, and, and I, I wrote, started writing vanilla, villanelles then. So, bye bye, Odelia. We'll see you later. Tom, I got a question about the uh, second, I guess, second to last poem um, about um, Gary Martin. The, yeah, running across the um, uh, highway traffic. Yeah. So he got hit by a car. Yeah. Did it kill him or? I don't know. This is what he told me. And like, as um, far as he thought, he, he was gone. And like, he just, he left. Wow. Yeah. 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 It was kind of one of those scary things. Yeah. Yeah. It was like, whoa, that's a mind boggle. Yeah, that whole poem put me in mind of um, uh, some of the best, you know, beat poems uh, that I recall reading by Jack Kerouac and um, Allen Ginsberg. And of course, that reminds me of Lawrence Ferlinghetti passing away. Right, right. Yeah, it was actually really sad, too, besides Lawrence passing away, which was phenomenal. But uh, Jim Hoggard passed away this week, too. He was the Texas Poet Laureate for two year 2000. Uh, he was an excellent poet. And essay writer and all and it was really sad to hear that he uh passed away yeah, mm. yeah. Mm. Right. Well, lawrence for Linguetti is one of those you know it's a bittersweet thing that he was 101 years old and evidently right. he was pretty active all the way up to the last moment right yeah no uh, he was and he i mean he pushed published a, a novel it went on his 100th birthday so I mean, he pretty much was there at the right time and starting everything. And, you know, he was there when uh, in San Francisco when Rex Ross, the, it was the San Francisco Renaissance, poetry renaissance going on. And then uh, and then you had that mixture of readers at the Gallery 6 reading and Lawrence was there at it. And he actually sent a telegram to Allen Ginsberg afterwards to saying, I want to publish a Howl. And Ginsberg only, it's a famous because Ginsberg read the first part of Howl that night and uh, the other readers there too. I mean, Jack Kerouac was there, but he refused to read. And so uh, he went around uh, going, go Alan, go, and like, um, and, and, and collecting money to big, buy big jugs of wine and passing the jug <laughs> of wine around. So uh, <laughs> it, it's a pretty wild thing. Uh, October 23rd, 1955, Gallery 6 reading. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So funny how that doesn't seem too long ago to me, but yeah, then I think it were in 2020. Well, that's past my lifetime ago. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, wow, Tom Wyman. Wow, Tom Wyman. Oh my gosh. That's so cool. Some friends of mine took from like, uh, from back when we were at Scouts and working at Campbell Jail. 
Uh, it's so good to see you. And I saw Ernie's here was here too. And all. how are you? I'm great, man. This is exciting. Yeah, the uh, the words out. The whole gang knows you're doing this. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Wow. Um, so you still are you in Boulder still? Um. Yeah, actually, Steamboat Springs. Steamboat Springs. Okay. Yeah, nice. it's closer to the slopes. Yeah, yeah. We're we kind of did the Wyman family pivot. We're on a ranch and um, oh, nice. doing doing that wow yeah my, if you're if you're uh, not too worried about it, you can send me your address we'll come visit sometime we get up yeah, I'll think about that. i better talk to my wife first <laughs> ah, i understand <laughs> no no coming your coming your way man absolutely that would be cool yeah oh that's funny so much the truth <laughs> ah well good really great to see you you, you yeah. as well, man. Yeah. Uh, so are you still teaching? Me? Are you, yeah. Or are you retired? So, Susie, my wife, um, she she's not teaching anymore. She, um, she was teaching for a bunch of years, and then she sort of went to um, uh, running all the sort of volunteer events at, at the schools oh, as a kid oh, wow, okay. got older yeah. and, and did all that and she's finally just um this year i think is sort of her her last year and she's she's extricated herself from that a little bit because girls are, are heading off to college now wow yeah yeah i hear you um so you did teach so for a little while and that must have been a, i thought you did maybe not back i've done you? like no, I mean, not with this gang on here. It doesn't count as teaching. I've done like little guest lectury stuff, but oh, yeah, okay. no, no, it's never, never anything like that. No real teaching. Oh, cool. So, um, so uh, we should hook up sometime, okay? And talk more, is that okay? Yeah, I, that would be great. I, yeah, it doesn't feel right to to um, take over this this whole Zoom meeting, but I would love to catch up with you, man. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's so long. I don't. I can't remember the last time we saw each other. Um, yeah. It, yeah, really. Uh, maybe it was at a Yahoo's thing, or or. Uh, I think it was. I think it was at Huntington Lake at a Yahoo. Oh, oh no, you were there for the the uh, the seventy uh, fifth anniversary, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay that was it. Yeah, no, that was only five years ago, but uh, it's still been a while. Yeah. And I got away from that with a uh, a book of your poetry as well. So. Oh, good, good, cool. Well, I've got a couple more cents, so that's a. Uh, we'll have to shuffle them off to you. Right on. Okay. Um, all right. So, do you have my email address? No. Go ahead. Um, um, I was. I'll put it in the chat. Perfect. Thanks, man. And this is my uh, university one. And you get to give it to anybody you want. You know, the guy on the street, you know, <laughs> ranch, ranch careful, James, now. careful, Mr. Ed, yeah. uh, whoever, whoever comes around. Your supplier. <laughs> <You're>, no, <I> <laughs> Absolutely, man. Okay, yeah, you'll, you'll be getting a lot of emails. Okay, good, good. All right, that sounds great. I, I'm happy about that. All right, I think we're gonna shut it down then. Is that right, Bill? Are you ready to shut it down? We got a, a busy schedule coming up tomorrow and uh, and uh, Saturday too. We're gonna be going to like uh, 11 o'clock probably tomorrow night. So oh. there's gonna be a lot of things. So you go to, uh, Tom, if you go to the, the uh, did you see the People's Poetry Festival website? No, so is that where I should go? Actually, Coleman gave me this link. Oh, did he? Yeah, that one. That's the one right there right. that Joshua put up, and that that's got like uh, all the different panels that are happening, and um, and the people that are going to be reading that them and stuff. So I'm going to be actually reading at the open mic tomorrow night, and then I'll read one poem on on Saturday uh, in the evening. That's a pretty funny one too. Yeah. Oh, good. I'll yeah. definitely be in for that one. Okay, good. All right. Well, we'll take care. Thank you so much, uh, Bill and and Joshua, and Karen. And Sandra, I'm not too sure I know Sandra, but thank you. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go home and start drinking. <laughs> Congratulations, Tom. Well, that was an excellent reading. reading. Congratulations thank on very nice thank reading. You. Thank you. Great All to right. see you, Tom. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.